You are just one book away from being a millionaire real estate investor. We're going to reveal how anyone can think and invest like millionaire real estate investors, as well as some personal and investing myths that may be holding you back from financial freedom. We'll be doing this by deep diving into a book written by the best-selling author of The Millionaire Real Estate Investor and the founder of the largest real estate agency in the USA, Gary Keller. Now, what makes this book different is Keller doesn't just give you practical, actionable, and proven strategies from his own experience. He's gone the extra mile to interview numerous millionaire real estate investors who have reached financial freedom through real estate and has combined his and their experience to create these practical, actionable, and proven strategies. Does luck matter? Before we start, I want to ask you a question. Do you think luck matters when it comes to real estate? Many people believe that luck plays a huge role in real estate. Finding that perfect property, the ideal tenant, or the right buyer often seems like a stroke of luck. It's easy to think that success in this field comes down to being at the right place at the right time. But Keller challenges this idea. He says, and I quote, success in real estate investing is no more about luck than is success in anything else in life. This means that the top players in real estate don't just wait around and pray they get lucky. They use strategies and models that have been proven over and over again. So does Lady Luck play a part? Sure sometimes, but you can't plan on it or predict it. Luck is, by definition, beyond your control. Keller emphasizes that the best investors don't count on luck. They make their own success by removing luck from the equation. And that's the real secret to success in real estate investing. It's not about waiting for luck, it's about creating your own opportunities through knowledge, strategy, and action. Now let's get into how you take luck out of the game of real estate. Lesson one, myths around personal and real estate investing. Your job can make you wealthy, right? Spoiler alert, it won't. This is just one of the myths Keller uncovers in his book. For this lesson, we'll be breaking down the most common personal and investing myths that are stopping you from becoming a millionaire real estate investor. Let's get started. Personal myth one. I don't need to be an investor. My job will take care of my financial wealth. We work, earn, and save, believing this will be enough for financial security. It's a straightforward plan, but is it a complete one? The millionaire real estate investor approaches this thought differently. Keller doesn't dismiss this belief outright, but instead encourages us to expand our perspective. Whilst a steady income is valuable, investing plays a critical role in securing your financial future. It's about building towards a financial base that empowers you to live your life's mission, whatever that is, without having to work. So the truth to this myth is you do need to become an investor if you wish not to be trapped and limited by your work. Your job is to help you save up for investments. Your investments are to help you become financially free to do what you want when you want. Personal myth two, I don't need or want to be financially wealthy. I'm happy with what I have. Contentment is a virtue indeed. Living within one's means, appreciating what one has, it sounds like a recipe for happiness. But life is unpredictable, isn't it? Imagine unforeseen situations, a family health emergency, your child's unexpected educational opportunity, or a once in a lifetime chance to pursue a passion. Are we truly prepared for these moments? This leads us to ponder the adequacy of our financial planning. Is just being content enough to navigate life's ups and downs? The millionaire real estate investor offers a perspective that challenges challenges this complacency. This isn't about chasing wealth for the sake of luxury. It's about being prepared for life's minimums and maximums. Financial stability is not just a safety net, it's a launch pad for possibilities. Personal myth three, it doesn't matter if I want or need it, I just can't do it. Often, we hear people say, I just can't do it, when it comes to investing or pursuing financial growth. It's a sentiment born from self-doubt or fear of failure. Think about it. How many times have we held back from trying something new just because we feared we wouldn't succeed? But is this fear a real reflection of reality? The key here is to challenge our assumptions about our capabilities. You can't predict what you can or can't do until you try. It's a simple yet profound insight that encourages us to step beyond our comfort zones. The real lesson here, don't place limits on your financial potential. Dismissing our abilities with I can't is often just a rationale for not even trying. The five myth understandings about the way you look at investing. You do not have to be as smart as a brain surgeon to become wealthy through investing. Now that we've tackled the personal myths that are holding you back, let's cover the investing myths that are stopping you from achieving wealth. 
Investing Myth 1 – Investing is Complicated When we think about investing, all the technical terms and complex charts can be overwhelming. But is investing inherently difficult, or is it just our approach that makes it seem so? Ella acknowledges that investing can seem complex, but suggests it's more manageable than we often think. The key is to start with the basics. Understand the foundational elements first, then gradually expand your knowledge. Effective investing is about building your understanding step by step. Investing Myth 2 – The best investments require knowledge most people don't have Often, we think top-notch investing is only for those with insider knowledge or special skills. It feels like there's a secret club and we're not in it. But according to Keller, your best investments will always be in areas you can or already understand. It's not about knowing everything. It's about focusing on what you get and can learn more about. In other words, invest in what you know. Pick an area that interests you, somewhere you're already familiar with, and become an expert in it over time, then grow from there. Investing Myth 3 invest Investing is risky, I'll lose my money. When we think of investing, the word risk often comes to mind. But does investing really mean taking big risks? Investing by definition is not risky. The essence of investing is about growing your money with the hope of a good return, not about taking wild chances. The real skill in investing isn't about ignoring risks, instead it's about understanding and managing them. Great investors follow principles and models that reduce risk while trying to maximize their returns. Investing isn't about gambling, it's about making smart choices based on solid principles. Sure, nothing is ever 100% risk-free, but with the right approach, investing doesn't have to be a game of chance. Investing Myth 4 – Successful investors are able to time the market Commonly, we hear that timing is key in investing. And that's true, timing is critical. The economy and markets move in cycles, creating opportunities to buy or sell. Many believe it's about watching from the sidelines or waiting for the perfect moment to jump in. But the reality is, timing is not just about reacting to opportunities, it's about constantly being in the game. The idea here is that you can't spot the best deals by sitting out. You need to be actively involved. The best opportunities often come quickly and go fast. Investing Myth 5 – All the good investments are taken Have you ever thought, all the good investments are already taken? Or, it's too late to get a good deal? Or, I should have started years ago? These are very common worries in the investment arena and the reality is that there are always deals out there. The challenge is finding them and acting on them. Keller explains that there are two forces always at play in any market. Economic forces like job growth, interest rates and population changes, and personal forces like marriage, relocation, or even divorce and debt. These forces, both economic and personal, are constantly shaping the market. They create opportunities, sometimes in obvious ways and sometimes not. The key thing to remember here is that good investments aren't all taken. They're out there in every market at all times. Some are more apparent, others less so, but they exist. And remember, you're never too late. These opportunities are continuously being created. Lesson 2. Think a million. When it comes to real estate investing, what's more important than money, knowledge, luck, and being able to influence others? Gary Keller would argue that the answer is mindset, and that's why he spends over a quarter of his book asking real millionaire real estate investors how they think and teaching you how to think like them as well. It's all to show that embracing the right mindset could be your most powerful tool in real estate investing. It's about cultivating a mindset that sees opportunities where others see obstacles, that learns from failures, and remains resilient in the face of challenges. It's about thinking like those who've already achieved the success you want. Mount Everest was impossible to climb. It always seems impossible until it's done. Going to space, walking on the moon, running a mile in four minutes. Once upon a time, it was deemed impossible to climb Mount Everest. But according to the Guinness World Records website, over 6,000 people have reached the summit, with a single person holding the world record for climbing the mountain 24 times in their lifetime so far, with no intention of stopping. Mount Everest is a testament to human determination and possibility. And it's a great metaphor for the journey you're about to set on as well. Financial goals can often seem unattainable and even impossible to achieve until you embark on the journey. You need to shift your mindset from seeing the goal as unreachable to viewing it as challenging but attainable. With strategic planning, perseverance and the right mindset, what once seemed an insurmountable financial Everest can become a triumph of personal achievement. Basically, it takes just as much time and energy to think small as it does to think big. The only difference lies in the results you get, so what's the mindset shift you need to accomplish?
Well, according to Kala from his conversations with other millionaires, there are six things you should focus on to achieve financial freedom. One, think powered by a big why. Ever wondered what drives successful people to achieve remarkable things? Keller thoroughly studied the lives of high achievers, from reading their biographies to watching documentaries, aiming to find a pattern in their journeys to success. What sets these people apart? Were they simply smarter, better educated, or born into success? Or was it their hard work and talents? Keller discovered that the key characteristic common among high achievers, including millionaire real estate investors, is their powerful drive to succeed, which he terms as a big why. It's not just about ambitions or goals, it's a deep personal reason that transforms their view of success from a desire into a necessity. This big why is what shifts their mindset. Success becomes more than just an aspiration, it turns into an imperative. This transition from wanting to achieve to feeling that they must achieve is what differentiates those who dream from those who accomplish. Think about your own big why. What drives you towards your goals? How can it redefine your journey towards success? Two, think big goals, big models, and big habits. Now you know your big why, what are you hoping to achieve? If you're aiming for a life that's larger than life, your thoughts need to be matched with action. Otherwise, you're just dreaming. To turn your big thinking into a big life, you need to define your big goals, specific targets that fulfill your big ambitions. Then adopt big models, proven systems and strategies that guide you to these goals. And finally, develop big habits, the consistent actions that align with these models. Your journey to financial independence or any big dream isn't just about setting a goal, it's about following the path laid out by those who've achieved what you aspire to do. Think of the great achievers in history. They didn't just dream, they acted. Now, they also left us a trail, methods and models that led them to their goals. Ignoring these proven paths and trying to reinvent the wheel is, as Keller says, a monumental waste of time. Essentially, define your big goals, learn from people who have already done what you're aiming for, and set about doing the same actions. 3. Think money matters. Money makes the world go around, and yet financial education is not widely taught. Millionaire real estate investors become millionaires because they realize early on that understanding money, its history, its rules, and its disciplines pay off significantly. This concept is called the money matrix. The money matrix is a concept that illuminates how wealthy people think about money. Basically, it's the idea that you can either work for money or have money work for you. In the money matrix, there are four key elements, capital or money in invested for growth, cash flow or money generated from investments, cash or money kept for future use or security, and consumption, money spent on non-growth items. Investors focus on building capital and generating cash flow, whilst consumers often focus on consumption, leading to what Keller calls shadow wealth, the appearance of wealth without its substance. Millionaire investors understand that prioritizing investments early dictates their financial future, often making short-term sacrifices for long-term gains. On the other hand, consumers, who tend to prioritize immediate spending, often struggle to build substantial wealth. This insight is crucial. Your approach to money can either build a foundation for lasting wealth or lead to a facade of wealth without stability. 4. Think net worth in the game of financial wealth building, there's something we've all heard of but usually think doesn't apply to us because we're not rich enough for it to matter. We're in a game that we don't know we're playing. Wealthy people don't just exist in this game like we do. They're playing, they're strategizing, and they're keeping score of what we know as net worth. Net worth is calculated by subtracting liabilities or debts from assets like cash, properties, and investments. This is the same method Forbes uses to rank the wealthiest individuals. They tally up all the assets, including business holders, stocks, properties, and subtract the debts, and the resultant figure is the individual's net worth, determining their position on the Forbes list. The real clarity in your financial journey comes from tracking your net worth over time. This practice helps you understand the consequences of your decisions, the difference between appreciating and depreciating assets, and what constitutes productive versus wasting assets. It's not just about how much they earn, but how much they keep and grow. Your balance sheet, which is your assets minus your liabilities, reveals your net worth. It's a clear indicator of where you stand in the game of financial wealth building. Five, think real estate. All right. So far, Gary Keller has walked us through four things we should focus on changing to help us achieve financial success. Now let's discuss why he and other investors think real estate specifically 
is the best way to build wealth. Real estate has been around for a very long time. Throughout history, societies with free markets have emphasized real estate ownership. Why? Because it's a foundation for financial prosperity. This isn't just a theory or some fancy sentence I've just made up either. It's a proven approach observed across nations and eras. Perhaps most importantly, Keller's own research and interviews with other investors align with these findings. It's Keller's professional opinion that no investment impacts the average person's net worth quite like real estate does. But what makes real estate so special compared to other investment options? Here's why. It's accessible to almost anyone, it appreciates over time, can be bought on margin and used as leverage for further investments, generates cash flow when rentable, and can be improved to increase its value. Depending on where you live or invest, it offers tax benefits like deductions, depreciation, and deferrals. Most importantly, real estate is stable. Its value rises steadily and is slow to fall. And let's not forget, it fulfills a fundamental human need, shelter. Real estate isn't just an asset, it's a versatile tool for building lasting wealth and financial security. Six, think value, opportunity, and deals. Now we know why we choose to invest in real estate, let's talk about a fundamental principle that underpins your success. You see, in the world of real estate, knowing what's valuable is the first step to recognizing profitable opportunities. You can't just jump into deals blindly and pray for the best. A good deal is facilitated by a clear step-by-step -step process. You have to know what's valuable before you can find opportunities, and you have to find opportunities before you can make deals. Step one, know what's valuable. Step two, find opportunity. Step three, make deals. These are key points that I'll delve into a lot more later on in the video. Seven, think action. Have you heard of analysis paralysis? Do you often have doubts about the decisions you make? Do you second guess yourself? Millionaire real estate investors don't. They understand that investing isn't just about having good knowledge, it's about putting that knowledge into action. And not just any action, but the right action. It's crystal clear that most successful investors reach their pinnacle because they made a pivotal decision. In other words, they took decisive action. They realized, I have enough knowledge to know I'm heading in the right direction. It's time to get started and keep learning as I go. These savvy investors grasp a fundamental truth. Real estate investing is not just about acquiring knowledge, but also experience over time. It's a journey where you continually expand your understanding, refine your strategies, and adapt to market changes. Some things in real estate are best learned and refined through doing. Taking that first step, making those initial investments, that's where the real education happens. It's a process of learning by doing and being willing to adjust your course as you gain experience. Buy a million. 90% of all millionaires became so through owning real estate. More money has been made in real estate than in all industrial investments combined. This was a quote from Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest Americans in all of its history. He knew the power of real estate investing. Now that we've learned the myths that are holding you back and the mindset changes you need to make to succeed, you need to learn how to put it all into practice. And the best way to learn this is to learn what not to do. You don't need to make years of bad decisions decisions when other, more successful people have already done it for you. In the realm of real estate, learning isn't just helpful, it's necessary. But there's a specific way you can learn that can put you ahead in the game. It's about harnessing the collective experience of those who already achieved what you aspire to do. Imagine gaining insights from over 100 millionaire real estate investors. Think of the wealth of knowledge, the myriad of experiences, and the multitude of mistakes and successes they've encountered. Each of these investors has contributed to a powerful repository of knowledge. And from this repository, five key models have emerged. Models that represent the best practices in the realm of real estate investing. Let's make your journey to success a bit smoother, shall we? The net worth model of the millionaire real estate investor. So, you're intrigued by the idea of becoming a millionaire real estate investor, right? Well, it all begins with something we all know but might not fully understand, the net worth model. Let's break it down. The net worth model is a journey, and like any journey, it has its steps. For millionaire investors, these steps are not just important, they're sacred. It's a simple but profound three-step process. Step one is to learn the path of money. Sounds philosophical, doesn't it? But it's quite practical. It's about understanding how money flows and grows, how each decision you make can either increase or decrease your potential wealth. Next up is manage a personal budget. This isn't about cutting coupons or only buying things when they're discounted. It's about strategically managing your resources to maximize what you can invest. Millionaire real estate investors are incredibly intentional about how they allocate every dollar. And finally, track personal net worth. 
This isn't just about numbers on a spreadsheet. It's about consistently measuring and reviewing your financial health. It's about making informed strategic decisions to grow your wealth over time. Each of these steps plays a crucial role. Understanding the path of money guides your choices. Managing your budget maximizes your investment potential. And tracking your net worth, that's how you see the real impact of your decisions and keep pushing your wealth upwards. By following these steps, you're not just dreaming of becoming a millionaire investor, you're actively walking the path towards it. The financial model of the millionaire real estate investor. Okay. It's time to spill the tea. What really makes properties worth their weight in gold? In real estate investing, there are two fundamental ways to build financial wealth. What makes these strategies particularly compelling is their ability to function simultaneously, offering a dual advantage in your investment journey. Let's explore how you can effectively leverage both to enhance your financial portfolio. The first way to build wealth is through equity. It's a term you might hear a lot, but what does it really mean in the context of real estate? And more importantly, how does it relate to your net worth? Think of equity as the portion of your property that you truly own. It's the difference between the property's current market value and the amount you owe on it. As your equity increases, so does a key component of your net worth. Now, there are two main ways equity can increase. One of these factors is something that happens due to economic factors like the overall health of the housing market, economic conditions, demand for housing, as well as the development and improvements around the property. This can also happen due to forced actions such as renovations or buying an undervalued house. What is this factor? It's known as price appreciation. Simply put, price appreciation is when the value of your house increases from when you first bought it. The second factor is debt pay down. Each time you make a mortgage payment, a portion goes towards reducing the amount you owe. As this loan balance decreases, the portion of the property you truly own, or your equity, increases. Therefore, over time, the more your house's price appreciates and the more debt you pay off, the more your equity increases. This ultimately means your net worth increases too. Let's get into the second fundamental way to build wealth. Let's imagine you already have an investment property and it's rented out to a tenant. Consider your rental income, the money coming in. Then there are the costs, which aren't just your typical expenses. We're talking about maintenance, potential vacancy periods, and your mortgage payments. The way these figures interact determines your net cash flow. Here's where it gets interesting. Over time, rental rates usually increase, a trend mirroring property value appreciation. This means your rental income could grow, but that's only part of the story. There's also a significant change that happens as you gradually pay down your mortgage. Once your loan is paid down, you can expect to see a significant increase in your net cash flow. Let's break this down in a diagram. As you can see, over time, your vacancy and rental rates stay the same, but your rent increases and at the end, your debt servicing goes away, growing your net cash flow. Now, as mentioned earlier, what truly makes properties worth their weight in gold is the dual advantage they offer. The ability to both build up equity and generate cash flow. This unique combination is what sets real estate apart as a lucrative investment. You can find many properties that offer this dual benefit, allowing you to simultaneously increase your net worth while receiving a steady stream of cash flow. The network model of the millionaire real estate investor. Great things in business are never done by one person, they're done by a team of people. Steve Jobs. You've probably heard stories of self-made millionaires, but here's a little secret. No one achieves success alone. Behind every successful real estate investor is a network of people who contribute to their success. They may not always be in the spotlight, but their role is crucial. Therefore, you need to do the same. Connecting with like-minded individuals is more than just building contacts. It's about aligning with people who share your goals learning from their experiences and providing value in return. This mutual support and exchange of knowledge are invaluable to growing as an investor. So how do you build this network? Seek out those who are chasing similar dreams. Make sure you're on the same page in terms of goals and aspirations. Be proactive in offering help and be open to learning from them. And remember that networking is not a one-off event. It's about routinely connecting, sharing your progress and growing together. As you embark on your journey in real estate investing, remember that building a strong network can be as valuable to you as any potential investment you might make. The lead generation model of the millionaire real estate investor.
If you've gotten to this part of the video, I'm sure one of the burning questions you have is how do I find great investment properties? It's a common question and guess what? There is a straightforward answer. It all revolves around something called leads. Leads are the lifeblood of real estate investing. They open the door to opportunities, but not just any opportunities, the right ones. And the secret of millionaires? They don't just get a few leads, they get a multitude, allowing them to pick from the cream of the crop. So what are leads? Their potential opportunities that could be yours. You want leads because if you secure a lead, that means the sale is yours. The lead generation model of the millionaire real estate investor is all about finding and receiving leads, the lifeblood of your property investment journey. The lead generation model starts with defining what you want in a property. This clarity is key. Are you looking for a certain location, a property type or specific features? This is what we call your criteria. Your criteria are the things you want when you're hunting for your next opportunity. They're the standards that define what kind of property you're looking for. Once you know what you're looking for, the next step is figuring out how to get those leads. This is where your network comes into play. Then you filter through these leads with your criteria and close the deals that fit. I've got Keller's lead generation model sketched out for you right here. Why not pause the video and take a closer look? It could be just what you need to kickstart your property investment journey. The acquisition model of the millionaire real estate investor. It's time to reveal the model that turns you from an average investor to a wealthy one. The fifth model Keller's book discusses is where you transition from investing your time to investing your money. This is the moment of truth, the point where your financial wealth is made or lost. Now, it's all about making money. We're talking about the acquisition model of the millionaire real estate investor, and it can become your blueprint for success. It's about buying right, ensuring that each investment you make is a step towards financial prosperity. Imagine buying a property with enough profit already built into the deal. You don't need to do anything. It's ready to move in. There's no repairs to be done. It's underpriced undervalued and you can resell it next week for more cash. That's the core of the acquisition model. It's essentially trying to ensure that all your investments succeed right from the get-go. Remember that in real estate there are no replays. Each acquisition you make is permanent. In real estate there are essentially two acquisition strategies. There's several different ways to go about both of these strategies and they all come down to two fundamental approaches. One strategy focuses on building cash and the other is about building long-term wealth. Either can be beneficial for you when you're investing and you can do both at the same time in the same property if you're very lucky but you need to choose a strategy that aligns with your financial goals and stick with the corresponding model. Fonda Rosa, a seasoned investor, puts it this way. There's a million ways to make a million dollars in this business. Start by picking one. So let's get into the first model. Our first model turns real estate into a cash generating machine. There are four basic ways to do this and whether you're starting out or looking to diversify your strategy, knowing how to generate cash quickly can be a game changer. Each method has its unique approach and benefits and choosing the right one depends on your resources, time and investment goals. So when you're buying for cash, what are the four ways to do it? First up is find and refer. It's the simplest way to get into the game. You become a scout, find investment opportunities and refer them to investors for a finder's fee. It's quick, involves no money or contracts from your end, but typically pays the least per deal. Next, we have control and assign. Here, you gain control over a property through an option or an assignable contract and then find someone else to buy it. It offers better margins than find and refer, but the deal volume might be lower. Then there's buy and sell. You purchase a property, hold on to it without making improvements and sell it at a higher price. Your profit margin improves here, but it requires more time and effort per deal. Lastly, the buy, improve and sell method. This is where you buy a property, add value through improvements and then sell it. It requires more time and more money, but offers potentially higher margins per deal. These four strategies offer different paths to generating immediate cash in real estate. The one you choose depends on your resources, your time and how much effort you're willing to put in. Now, whilst buying for cash is great for short-term growth, it's not going to lead to real long-term, pass it on to your kids type generational wealth. What will? The next acquisition strategy. Strategy. When it comes to building wealth, there are strategies focused on long-term gains by combining cash flow with equity. These strategies are where real wealth is built. Think of these strategies as planting seeds for future financial prosperity. They involve more than just a one-time profit. 
They're about creating ongoing income and increasing your assets value over time. Buying for cash flow and equity can be done three different ways. Each of these strategies offers a unique path to building your wealth in the real estate market. They're about making smart choices now for significant gains in the future. But what exactly are these strategies and how do they work? Let's get into the details. The first strategy is the lease option. This approach involves leasing a property with an option to buy it later at a preset price. It's a smart play for those who want to get into property investment with little or no upfront cash. You lease the property to someone else at a higher rate, creating cash flow for yourself, plus there's the potential for equity gain if the property's value increases by the time you buy. Next up is buy and hold. This one is straightforward. You buy a property and you rent it out. It's a classic approach for generating steady rental income. And if you pick the right property, there's the added bonus of the property's value appreciating over time. We saved the best for last. The buy, improve and hold method is particularly effective for several reasons. This method not only offers the potential for higher and more sustained returns, but also provides more control over the investment's value, independent of market fluctuations. Though it does demand more upfront investment in terms of time and resources, its alignment with long-term wealth building makes it a great strategy for long-term success in real estate. Let's dive a bit deeper into what many consider the gold standard of real estate investing, the buy and hold or the buy, hold and improve strategy. The buy and hold method is all about the long game. It's a strategy designed for maximum wealth building. But what should you keep in mind when you're considering this approach? There are a couple of different factors. First, there's the property's potential for appreciation. We touched on this earlier in the equity build up chapter. Appreciation can happen naturally over time with market changes or through what we call forced appreciation, which is where you actively increase the property's value through improvements and renovations. If there's potential for appreciation, you're building up your equity and your possible returns when you eventually sell, if ever. The second key aspect is cash flow. You want to make sure the property you're buying will bring in more money than it costs to maintain and manage. Positive cash flow is what will keep your investment sustainable in the long run. So to sum it up, the key to nailing the buy and hold investment strategy is to focus on properties that have potential for appreciation and a good cash flow. If a property can't do both of these things, you might want to think twice about buying. It's all about staying in that sweet spot to ensure the success of your long-term investment plan. Picture this, you land in a new country, pockets lined with only $120, stepping into a world of unknowns. You have no idea where to even begin your journey. The only thing you have is the determination to make it. That was Carlos Herbon, and from that modest $120, he weaves a tale of sheer determination and savvy investing. Fast forward to today, and Carlos is at the helm of a $3 million real estate empire, reaping in a staggering $30,000 of rent each month. His story isn't just about financial growth. It's a testament to dreaming big and turning that dream into an unwavering obsession. Carlos approaches real estate with a unique philosophy, acquire, hold and see every setback not as a failure but as a valuable lesson on the road to success. His journey is more than inspirational. It's a vivid illustration of how far ambition coupled with a smart strategy can take you in the world of real estate. Never underestimate the power of purpose and focus. Let's take a moment to reflect on the incredible power of focused action in the journey to financial wealth. Remember, the path to becoming part of that 20% who own the 80% of wealth isn't just a distant dream. It's a choice, a choice that you can make right now. Decide what matters to you, decide how to go get it, and then focus on getting it. As you step forward from here, also think about the law of momentum. A penny that doubles every day for 30 days can turn into millions and your small focused efforts can compound into a fortune. It's the small consistent steps fueled by a clear vision and unwavering focus that lead to monumental achievements. So what's your next step? How will you apply this focus and momentum to your real estate endeavors? The journey to wealth and success isn't just for a select few. It's open to anyone who chooses to take that first focus step. Remember the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Take that step today. Stay focused on your goals and watch as your efforts compound into success beyond your wildest dreams. Now, 
Do you know there's a place that's perfect to implement a lot of these strategies? It's here in the Philippines. The real estate industry is a key driver of the Philippine economy. It generated 536 billion pesos in 2022 alone. More and more Filipinos from around the world are realizing that the Philippines is a great place to invest. Now, one of the key headaches in real estate at the moment in the Philippines is getting a home loan. That's why we've created videos that reveal things like how to pick the best bank, how do you get financing as an OFW, what's the process of getting a loan and more. If you want to educate yourself on some of the most important factors in investing in the Philippines, we suggest starting with these two videos and checking out our channel. Inga.